10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 194. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 194 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. My name is Nick Manella. I am the creator and host of the show. And uh, welcome back in everybody. If you're brand new to the show, we are so glad to have you in. We hope you've had a great week and you are ready to get into today's jazz lesson. Hey, did you know that the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson is a listener supported show? That means all the support we receive to keep these episodes coming in high quality and keep the show alive comes from you. And we have an absolutely awesome group of over 250 people that choose to support the show on Patreon. Patreon is a platform where you can support the creators that you enjoy directly and make sure that the quality content keeps coming at you. So if you want to join up to the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson uh, Patreon page, you get a bunch of fantastic benefits, including PDFs that go along with every single one of these episodes. That means there's 194 PDFs over there to help you along your jazz journey. So to find that page, go over to 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, and it will only cost you three bucks a month to join up, show your support, and uh, show that you like jazz education. Uh, we've got some brand new people that signed up this week. Thank you to Dan, John, Helen, and Steve for becoming a part of the 10-Minute Jazz Lesson family. Really appreciate that, and we couldn't do it without all of you over there. All right, so this week is going to be the conclusion of our month-long series on reading, and it's going to be a doozy. Um, I've written an etude, as I always do, for these uh, last episodes of the month, and this week we're going to be looking at a minor blues, and what we're going to be doing is kind of putting together all of the concepts that we've talked about this week. So let's kind of review some of the stuff that we've talked about this week. The first episode on reading was all about tough key signatures and being able to read both, you know, heavily uh, sharp key signatures and heavily flatted key signatures, and having an equal ability to be able to play them both, uh, no matter our bias towards either sharps or flats, which I believe that kind of every instrument has a bit of a bias. So that was the first episode. The second episode was all about subdivision and being able to freely move in and out of different subdivisions from eighth notes to eighth note triplets to sixteenth notes to anything that you can imagine. So you worked on that for the second week. And then the third week was all about syncopation. So being able to play these kind of funky rhythms where most of the notes land off of the beat and kind of being able to keep your place in the measure and not have that, you know, off the beat profile screw you up and cause you to get lost. So these are three skills that I think are absolutely essential to being a good reader, you know, being able to sight read, being able to show up on a gig and have whoever's running the gig give you the music on the spot and, and standing a chance to be able to read that music and nail it. This particularly happens in the big band situation. Um, I play with a lot of big bands where I get a giant folder of music right when I get to the gig and we get the list of the, you know, 20, 25 tunes that we're going to play on that gig. And you just have to read them down and do a good job of it uh, because you know that the people around you are going to be able to absolutely nail that stuff. So that's kind of a review on why we've been talking about reading, the different skills that we have developed. So now let's talk about the etude that I've prepared for you. What I've done is I've prepared three choruses over a minor blues, and I chose a minor blues because I wanted to put something in kind of a simple key signature at first to get you to start reading rhythms. That was kind of my main goal uh, with this etude at first was to write some really challenging rhythms for you and present you with something that's going to take you quite a bit of time 
to learn, especially if reading is one of your weak points, which I think for a lot of us it is. So this is going to be a challenge, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, you may get very frustrated with this etude. So the first thing we're gonna do is hear the etude, and then we're gonna talk about just a couple of spots in it where uh, some of the concepts show themselves and we'll sort of go from there. So here's the etude. If you have the PDF, look at it as it goes by. It's gonna be a nice slow tempo, and I like the minor blues because there's not a whole ton of changes in it so that we can concentrate on basically just playing in one key, but thinking about rhythm and subdivision and all that kind of stuff. So here it is. So you can hear there's a lot going on in that, particularly rhythmically. Um, I tried to not make the passages too hard to actually physically pull off, but that rhythm is really going to be the big thing, kind of the thorn in your side on this one. Um, so let's look at a couple of things and a couple of the concepts that I tried to accomplish in this. So you'll notice that right off the bat, the first two measures are all based on syncopation, right? So what I've done is just written a bunch of eighth notes off the beat. Now, being able to do this for a short period of time is not that bad, but having to do it for over two measures is really difficult. So you'll have to really uh, think about whether you know where those offbeats are and whether you can keep them in time while you're playing it. And then I've tried to do the subdivision thing in measure nine. So if you notice in measure nine, I have a bunch of 16th notes, right? And then in measure 10, I've got a bunch of triplets. So you're gonna have to be able to play 16th notes and then immediately switch over to that triplet subdivision, right? And I've done that kind of in a couple of different places. In measure 13, I've got a bunch of 16th notes. And then when you get to measure 17, you're playing some triplets. Um, that, that is one of the big skills, I think, is being able to freely subdivide any way that you want to. It's going to give your solos just this incredible depth if you can uh, have that rhythmic variety and kind of not be scared of it. Now, if you notice in the third chorus, so starting at measure 25, I'm doing a lot of phrases on one note, like there's a lot of stuff on concert C, and really we're dealing with those two concepts together at the same time. So there's a lot of syncopation and there's a lot of changing subdivision. And I think that is the hardest part rhythmically. So I chose to just kind of do it on one note so that you weren't dealing with, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff going on, right? So this etude should be really good for you. And I know it's gonna be tricky at first, but stick with it. Maybe take it one chorus at a time or even take it four measures at a time uh, if you really are having trouble working out the way that some of those rhythms fall. Play along with me. Um, that would be a really helpful thing because I think I pretty much got everything correct. Uh, there might have been a few mistakes here and there. It's just a really, really tricky thing to play. Now, you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but Nick, what about the third concept? What about playing in really tough key signatures? 
Well, if you've noticed, the second page of the PDF, I've done the exact same etude up a half step. Oh, geez. So if you're really a glutton for punishment, if you really know that you have to work on playing in those tougher keys, maybe some of those tough flat keys, go and play the second page, which is the exact same thing, up a half step. That is really going to give you a lot of trouble. I know it's giving me a lot of trouble when I'm trying to play it because it just becomes a lot harder to read. And that's also just a much tougher key on my instrument. So there it is. You've got kind of the complete reading exercise if you do both parts of this PDF. Uh, this is really going to improve your reading skills and really give you a challenge that you've probably never had before. So I hope you've enjoyed this month's you know, exercises and this month's episodes. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world talking about reading, but like I keep saying, it's just such an absolutely essential skill to being a jazz musician that I could not sort of avoid making a bunch of episodes about this. So I hope that you've really gotten something from this, whether you are, you know, the worst reader in the world, or you're sort of getting there, or you're a really good reader, I hope I've managed to challenge people uh, at sort of every level here. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if these were valuable episodes to you or, or not valuable episodes to you. Uh, you can drop me a message in the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group. It's a great place to get in touch. Let me know what you think, or maybe post a little video of yourself playing these etudes. That would be really cool to see some of you out there actually practicing this stuff and uh, starting to improve your reading skills. That would really warm my heart. So remember, if you want to get these etudes, go over to 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, only three bucks a month. We are a listener-supported show, so the only reason that we can keep going is because of the support from you wonderful people out there. All right, I'm going to close out the show by attempting to play the etude up a half step. This might get ugly, you guys, but I'm going to try it. So it's going to be the exact same stuff, but you're going to notice that it is going to be up a half step. And I'm also going to include uh, a play along in both of these keys for the Patreon members this week so that you can immediately just download that MP3, download the PDF, and then you could be off to the races starting to learn this stuff with some really great chordal accompaniment. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.